Park has been most inhospitable to its visitors. Here's Henning Burke. Pallister's head. Atkins trying the early shot and Michael had to drop on it. I always like to see that. That's a great start. They get a shot in on goal within 30 seconds of the start. Not only gets your team up, gets your crowd excited as well. And you can see the trouble Peter Schmeichel has in dealing with that. Very slick surface today. Well laid off by Sutton under extreme pressure from Pallister. Ripley with the cross. Bruce is there first for United. Cantona keeping it safe and simple. It's making light of the lack of numbers. And a booking for Sutton. Well, it was a powerful run, and you see Chris Sutton on his far side, and he goes for the tackle. I tell you again, I think the player's a little unlucky, Martin. He got his body between Paul Ince and the ball. He certainly made contact with Ince, but I also thought he won the ball as well. But jumping in like that, the referee decides it's a free kick, and these days it's almost automatic booking. Pallister with the free kick. Hughes! the outside of the net that was ruffled by the shot. Certain sections of the ground thought it was in. Well, you don't usually see Blackburn Rovers give away as much room as this in the, their own penalty area. It gets in very easily, very cheaply. And only the angle kept Mark Hughes from hitting the target there. Warhurst. Yes, sir. Here's a day for the slide tackle. That was Irwin. Irwin again. Henry well forward. And ball. Difficult for Manchester United to uh, get out at the moment. Well, the thing in their mind, Mark, is just don't concede. The so takes. Michael's come a long way. Oh, and the punch. Goes to Warhurst. Oh! A wonderful goal from Paul Warhurst. His first for Blackburn Rovers. Great vision, great technique. Ah, oh, this is wonderful execution. The goalkeeper comes an awful long way. And that, in all honesty, is not a good punch. Punches it straight back into the middle of the pitch. But I'll tell you what, don't think that was an easy chance. Look at that, he didn't have much to hit there. But didn't he do it beautifully? That's a magnificent finish from Paul Warhurst. But question marks over the goalkeeper. That's a massive ball from Kane. The Kanchelskis corner for United. But the one thing that guarantees you a game, Mark, is an early goal. We have that now. And I think we could get a classic today. Sharp will take the corner. Came off the back of Tony Gale's head. Keane! Chance. Half a chance. Yeah, half a chance. They don't look confident dealing with crosses, strangely. Steve Bruce does well in setting up Keane. He was never really threatened, he was always bending away from goal. But we look at Warhurst's goal again, the punch is the same, Martin, it's back into a dangerous area. Back right down the centre of the field. Warhurst catches it just on the up. But I tell you what, look at that, look at that, no room for error. What a finish. Hughes. Ahead of Kanchelskis. Oh, Cantona. That was a fantastic example of the strength of the belief in this team that, that Kenny's got here. That was Alan Shearer out jumping Eric Cantona at the back post. And Shearer now on the ball with a terrific pass for Sutton. And once more, Warhurst. 
capable of coming up with a spectacular. Yeah, more possession from Manchester United, Martin, but more threat from Blackburn Rovers. They've looked the most dangerous attacking side, whereas Manchester United have enjoyed a great deal of possession till about 20, 30 yards from goal, and then most of it's just frittered away. Nothing much has happened for them, up to now. Warhurst getting his longest run on the side since that broken leg, just over a year ago. Which was such a setback so soon after linking up with Blackburn. I'll tell you what, his goal today will be the talk of Hillsborough <laughs> tomorrow when the Sheffield Wednesday players come back to work. I bet you. Sharp. That's a booking. Looking for Berg. Now, this is what he was doing so well in midweek, Lee Sharp. When I won against one situation, I just get the impression that he really fancies himself now. Now, it's vital for Engberg that Stuart Ripley helps him now, Martin. A yellow card and a long way to go in the game. Pallister. Mark Hughes doing the juggling. Ball still in play. It isn't now. Hughes wasn't too sure about how Blackburn blocked him then, looking around for some support from the officials. He's looking for one of, of two things, I think, here. Either a hand used when it gets blocked there, or the disco for a corner. I think that was his other one. He's certainly looking for a corner there. I think that was it. Possession count going even more Manchester United's way. It stays Blackburn's way on the scoreline. And it might get better here. This is Wilcox. Oh, Pallister! Well, that's a difficulty. How often do we talk about that ball? Played in early, with defenders running back towards their own goal. And Pallister's an accomplished centre-back of the highest quality, but even he has difficulty in dealing with that cross. Kenny Dalglish with a place in footballing folklore that's assured, but few get to know the man behind the mask. These days, you find Alec Ferguson a little more open with his emotions. Wilcox, who uh, wants to go on whenever he gets in possession, whether it's through the centre then or more often wide on the left-hand side. Hughes. Time is beckoning, but Lee Sharp. It's going oh, to never. be a penalty. I can't believe that decision. I cannot believe that decision. Henning there, the ball came off him. Oh, that's unbelievable. Watch this now. Sharp plays the ball. You watch Henning there, plays the ball away there. They collide. Down they go. The off penalty decision is ridiculous. The sending off is even worse. The watch there. There, he wins the ball quite clearly. Down they go together. I mean, I can't believe that. I cannot believe it. Well, the shake of the head is a mild reaction in the circumstances. Blackburn incensed. One can only say if Gerald Ashby saw the angle that we've just shown you, he could possibly have decided what he has decided. Well, we saw this confrontation in the charity shield. Eric Cantona against Tim Flowers. Cantona scored at Wembley. Will uh, he have the chance here now? It's 1-1 if he tucks it away, which he does. Was there any other result, Martin? I wouldn't bet any money in that man, Mr. A penalty kick, I really wouldn't. But it's a real blow to Blackburn Rovers. Come as you like, slots it in the corner. Didn't expect anything else. So suddenly, they're level on the scoreline and they have the advantage. 11 against 10 on the pitch. And there's a much more up-tempo beat on the Manchester United bench. 
And I think Kenny will just want to get his team into half time, Martin, and settle them down. Well, we'll certainly check with Gerald Ashby about his thoughts on that during the half time break. But a moment of high controversy here. A penalty that Cantona put away. Manchester United had a lot of the ball. Blackburn looked much more dangerous. A great goal by Warhurst to give them the lead. But suddenly, Henningberg sent off. United level. The referee still surrounded by Rovers players. 1 1 at Ewood Park. It's storming here at half time. Blackburn have reshaped. I'll get Andy to point that out for you in a moment. With 10 men now. Feeling in the Blackburn camp, and I, I would suggest the majority of the neutrals as well that Henningberg was very harshly dealt with. Yes, Kenny's been busy at half time, Martin. Chris Sutton has dropped into the back four alongside Gale and Henry. They're going to operate as three centre backs. I think that will mean that Warhurst and Lasor will be able to push forward. They'll narrow the midfield with Ripley tucking in, Wilcox tucking in to help Atkins and Alan Shearer, the lone raider up front. If you had to go with just one up front, Alan Shearer would be pretty much everyone's choice. Hughes, Kanchelskis. The Manchester United must really fancy their chances now of getting what would be a, a very big result for them. Never easy to play against 10, though. And especially if that 10 field have been hard done by, it was an injustice. Not just a problem for this game, sadly, is it? It uh, seems to happen more and more now. The referees put on the spot by the law enforcers above them. Well, of course, Steve Bruce was booked very early in the first half. Well, maybe a final warning here. Otherwise, we might have ten aside. Free kick to Blackburn. The so. Keane cuts it out. But Blackburn have a corner and it's Bedlam behind the goal. Very short. First goal of the season. The big Scott, who his reputation in past years was all about scoring goals, pulls one out of the hat for his team today. But I tell you what, I must question Peter Schmeichel. It does bounce in front of him, Martin. It is a greasy ball, but I don't care about that. A goalkeeper of his quality shouldn't be beaten by a header like that. But he doesn't care. He's put his side ahead again. Question the courage of Kenny Dalglish's team. Kanchelskis. Oh, and it's Henry there, but Kanchelskis wraps it back into the back of the net and Manchester United are level straight away. Andre Kanchelskis. Well, what a strike. You feel hard done by Colin Henry. He was at full stretch and dealing with this ball driven across the goal. But you must credit Kanchelskis. How alive and aware he was to the situation. And what a finely struck shot that was. Gives Tim Flowers, who set himself well, absolutely no chance. It's past him before he can move. Oh, what a game. 2-2. Two, two. We're in the seventh minute of the second half. Shearer climbing for this one. Wilcox. It's Bruce. Sliced away by Keane. Shearer. 
The two goals, 67 seconds apart. And the circumstances would perhaps flatten lesser teams than Blackburn. Having gone ahead with 10 men through Colin Hendry's first goal for 21 months in the league. He attacks it well, Martin. He gets up very well. Look at that, attacking the ball. But I tell you what, the big Dane would be happy about that. But a minute later, well, this is a great strike. Past him flowers before he could move. But what a blow to Blackburn. Managers are trying to get words on. If anyone, anything's going to the goalkeeper, then no matter how simple it looks, then follow it in. Because you can see it was like a pan of soap, straight through his arms. 25 minutes to go. Well, if support counts for anything, Blackburn won't be found wanting. So cool here. On it in a flash, who steadies himself and executes it beautifully. Now that really is a hammer blow for Blackburn. Under no pressure at all and possession of the ball. Some olays from the United fans. But there is one factor that we haven't uh, mentioned, Andy, that Manchester United played a very big game as recently as Wednesday. Blackburn have had time to recharge the batteries. I think you're right, in the normal circumstances I would agree with you, but what Manchester United are doing at the moment, they're making the ball work for them. They're using the extra man, and it's the blue and white shirts that are having to work twice as hard to get it back from them, Martin. And they can't get it back at the moment. They should have just stayed in positions. Erwin jogging five and ten yards, instead of 11 against 11 having to sprint maybe those five and ten yards. Quicken it up here with more purpose after the patience. Brilliant layoff from Hughes. Paul Ince. In comes Kanchelskis. Oh, it's it. Must be offside. Must be offside. He is offside. He doesn't know it yet. He does know. <laughs> he does know. I think we'll see here quite clearly why he is offside. It's great build-up, as you see. They quickened it there. And he probably thinks he should have scored then. But watch this. Offside. Even I could have given that decision. Long from Schmeichel. Butts did well to rein that in. Mickey Butt. Going for United's fourth himself. All he gets is a corner. Did well. The way he gathered it in, it wasn't a great layoff. And he had a lot to do. And then he just drove it, Tony Gale, who's always going to have problems. But that touch there took it a little bit far away from him. And allowed Tim Flowers to get out and get something on it. Well, Henningberg now confined to the ranks of spectators. We need to hit the target. In the time that remains, which is just over 10 minutes. 13 months since they were last beaten here in the league. Still determined not to be beaten by Manchester United today. Keane plays safe. Probably could have let it run for a goal kick, but wasn't to know that. You don't take chances. Roy Keane was quite right. 
unless he was 100% sure that was going out, just to play it away. But it was half a chance that opened up for Paul Warhurst. Pulled everyone back. Wilcox to take the corner. Ripley couldn't dig out the shot. Ball was too close to him. Now comes Cantona. The side. United have to turn back and defend again. Sutton. Ripley. Well, twice it's come to Stuart Ripley in a matter of seconds, neither time in the ideal stride. But this is what they've got to do now in the last ten minutes. Try and keep the ball up this sub, try and forge an opening, and more importantly, try and take one. Hendrik and oh! Terrific stretch by Schmeichel. Well, that's one of those you can't be sure whether it's going in or not. I'm not sure whether this one is, but the goalkeeper doesn't know that. But it's the one that's headed down and it gives the goalkeeper a chance to get across. Bruce gets his head to it. Oh, well played, Andre Kanchelskis. And he can run away here and make absolutely sure for Manchester United. Sharps with him. Kanchelskis still and still. 4-2. That's it now, Martin. I just wondered what Paul Warhurst was trying to do here. He's got to back off when he's the last defender like that. He's committed himself without getting anywhere near the ball. And Chelsea can roll sharp in, but he's got the confidence to say, I can do it myself. I'll take another goal. Great composure here. Commits the goalkeeper. Down goes Tim Flowers. And Chelsea thinks, that's what I want, that's what I'm waiting on. The rest now should be a formality, and it was. Through the legs of Jason Wilcox, Kanchelskis collects his second, and Manchester United will surely collect the three points. Here's Slater. his good left side. That was quite a problem for Ian Pearce, his first real involvement. Well, it's hard to tune himself to the considerable pace of the game. You come on to a game like you're struggling and you're a man down and someone comes flying at you and you're the last line of defence. Count the circumstances that went United's way just before half time. It's Ripley crossing here. That was Wilcox flying in. He was moving faster than the ball actually came off him. But those who will tell you that Manchester United are only interested in the European Cup, don't you believe them? Well, the players are not only interested in the FA Cup. And at the end of the day, it will be the players that determine whether they win. The Premiership again or not, Martin. But I said at the beginning it was a big match for Manchester United. I believe that, Martin. And Alex Ferguson is going to be a very happy man that he's secured three points here. Bruce. Oh, the wounds are gaping. United trying to rub salt into them. But we should remember it is only October. Last time we watched this fixture, it was so near the end of the season. Errors can be repaired over the months ahead. Counter now. Pierce gets it away. Reflection on route, and it's flat for its throw. It's all the formality, really, now.
penalty decision by Gerald Ashby right on half time that robbed Blackburn of a deserved lead, robbed them of the services for the second half of Henningberg, who was sent off. And then Graham Rousseau's mistake at 2 2 to let in Mark Hughes for a crucial goal. Two supreme examples of the class of Andre Kanchelskis. Paul Warhurst with a wonder goal for Blackburn to set the match off on a terrific course. But Manchester United flexing their muscles and going third in the Premiership, overtaking Blackburn by overturning them at Ewood Park and becoming the first side to do so here in a league game for more than 13 months. Andy, final thoughts? Well, it's hard to know what to take out of the game. Blackburn looks so good in the first half, Martin. United had plenty of possession, but the cut and thrust was all Blackburns, the threat was all Blackburns. One, minute, one moment, one moment at the end of the first half changed the whole complexion of the game. But for Manchester United, it's a huge result, I think, in league terms. To have gone ten points behind Newcastle this early would have given them a mountain to climb. They now claw that back. Just saw Colin Hendry going off, the player who got the goal to put Blackburn 2-1 in front early in the second half. Great courage then, but in the end it was the class of Manchester United when the odds favoured them, and it's finished here. Blackburn Rovers 2, Manchester United 4.